Hi there, I'm Rex King. Welcome back to another episode of RU Films, currently in theaters, and today we're talking about Furiosa. So Furiosa is the prequel to Mad Max Fury Road and follows, well, Furiosa. And basically it follows her from her young childhood all the way up to when we meet her in Mad Max Fury Road. And um, pretty much the film does center around her growth as a character, but it also kind of is a world-building movie as it like expands upon the world that we got to see in Fury Road and kind of how the society functions as a whole. And I really enjoyed that. I love a good world-building movie, and this film is definitely that. It manages to get a lot of the dynamics across while also being compelling, and you really get the dynamics in this film. Uh, I really liked uh, the like rivalry between uh, Jack, uh, who's the villain in the Mad Max Fury Road, and the new villain, um, Dementis. Uh, and what, like, pretty much their, like, rivalry of each other, um, their, the entire, like, battle between those two is fascinating. And I love how, like, Anya Taylor-Joy's uh, Furiosa uh, kind of finds herself in the middle of the, all this and really wants to both get revenge on something that happens to her while also wanting to get back to where she believes she belongs. It's a really a fascinating story, a great epic that I was not expecting. I expected this film to be good because, honestly, I'm a huge fan of George Miller. I felt like Mad Max Fury Road was fine, but I needed more to go on. And when I heard that we were getting Furiosa, I was like, yes, this could be exactly what I'm looking for. And it was, but it was also more than that. Like, it was way, like, exceeded all my expectations. And I give the film humongous props. The performances uh, by Anya Taylor-Joy and the girl who plays young Furiosa are spectacular. They both uh, manage to convey a lot through their body language as they have very few lines. And they manage to uh, like get you hooked on this character and manage to convey exactly what the character is think thinking just using their eyes and their facial expressions. And I really like that. Um, honestly, though, the standout has to be Chris Hemsworth as Dementis. Like... Every time he's on screen, he is stealing the show. He has such gravitas. He's just a, like, wonder in this movie. And I didn't expect to like him because I do not like a lot of Chris Hemsworth films. I felt like, I always feel like he's kind of okay as Thor, but hamming it up a little bit too much. But here, he proves that he has severe acting chops that I just did not know he had. This is by far my favorite performance by him. By far. Um, and the visuals are also just a wonder. Like, I loved all the action scenes when we had them. And the quiet moments are also really good as well. I, I really didn't notice any bad CGI. I've heard a couple people complain about it. But I didn't notice it while watching the film. And there were, like, times... Like, I really like just engrossed myself in this film and I just could not get over how well I was enjoying myself. The sound design is absolutely spectacular. Not just the score, but the sound design of the engines and just the ambiance. The, the movie was like so well done. I really enjoyed this film. I cannot stop raving about it, and I highly recommend it. Now, if you go into this one expecting Mad Max Fury Road again, you're probably going to be disappointed as it's not nearly that action-packed, but it didn't need to be. I don't feel like that would have helped the film. Instead, it managed to do its own thing while building up the world that Mad Max Fury Road established. I really enjoyed this film, and I highly recommend it. And I going to give this film a 9 out of 10. I was not expecting this film to be as great as it was and it exceeded every expectation I set out for it. Anyway, that's my opinion on Vurio. So what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.